Hi everyone, welcome to Curiosity, the science show presented by Young Academy of India. I'm Felix. I'm talking to you from uh, here in Bathinda where I'm, uh, you know, the venue of this episode is my own home. The reason is seasonal air pollution have skyrocketed. You know, in this area, it's like more than 300 AQI. So beware of it. It's really harmful, right? So I've covered this many times in Curiosity in the previous episodes. So do wear mask and also use the indoor, uh, you know, the air purifier, right? So yeah, so with this, uh, let's start the show, right? So what really moved the sciences in the last month, November? So we, we usually talk about the etymology of the, the word month, right? Month name. Uh, November, just like the previous two months, the September and October, November is the ninth month when the Roman calendar system used to be followed in 500 BC times, you know. So the etymology is coming from Novem, that is Latin, which in turn comes from Sanskrit, you guessed it, Nava, number nine, you know. So that is the origin of it. And florigraphy this month is of uh, chrysanthemum, the beautiful flower, you know. So a quick recap of what really moved the sciences, so that is the, the new section of the curiosity. Uh, the first and foremost, the most important news of the last month has been the declaration of Nobel Prizes. You know, Catalan Calico and Drew Weissman uh, won uh, Physiology or Medicine Nobel Prize. And uh, that is for their uh, contribution, the immense contribution on the development of mRNA vaccine, especially the BioNTech where, they, uh, you know, the, the Catalan worked, right? And BioNTech is a, a Pfizer vaccine, right? They developed this mRNA vaccine first, then the Moderna came. Both of these, uh, the, the, the technique behind it is the mRNA. See the mRNA, uh, basically the mRNA codes for the people, uh, you know, the spike protein of COVID-19 virus, SARS uh, and COV-2. So now if you just code only the spike protein and inject into the human being with the liposome, of course, without which it simply gets degraded, the mRNA gets degraded, right? What is going to happen is that it's going to trigger a lot of immune response, you know, extreme immune response and inflammation that it doesn't work like that. So you really need to modify this mRNA. And uh, what this team has done is that they discovered a new method of modifying this mRNA to convert them into the vaccine by adding something called uh, pseudopuridine uh, nucleoside into the mRNA so that the immune response would become uh, uh, you know uh, intended the eff eff uh, you know efficient immune response is guaranteed so yeah so the uh, you know this calico's uh, story is really inspiring university of pennsylvania where she worked demoted her and uh, the, the review team concluded that she's not even fit for the faculty position, you see. So by the time this Nobel Prize was announced, Calico has already left the United States and she went back to her home country, the Hungary, you know, while uh, Weissman still working in Pennsylvania. So it is a, a, it's a story of inspiration, friends. You know, lots of respect to this uh, lady, especially this lady and of course both both of them equally contributed into the development of this mRNA vaccine, yes. Now coming to the, the chemistry, it goes to Monkey Bavandi from Tunisia, such a small country north of Africa, you know, uh, in the Mediterranean coast, the capital of which is Tunis, the former uh, French colony. Huh? Laos Bruce and Alexei Ekimo from Russia, yeah, for uh, quantum dots. So quantum dots are really tiny crystals with immense applications, especially in biomedical imaging. So these nano crystals have size, uh, you know, that that actually determine the color that it emits when, uh, you know, when it excited with the photons. So basically, uh, small crystals emit uh, blue color usually right and as the crystal size increases the bigger crystal uh, emits the the red light so uh, to, to see this quantum dot technology the, the easiest way is to go to the nearest TV seller TV shop so yes a QLED you might have seen that right it's everywhere these days throughout the world so QLED the Q stands for quantum quantum dot LED right so this uh, uh, trio developed this technology so they got the Nobel Prize now physics for Pierre Agostini, uh, Ferenc Krausk and Annie Huyler forgive for my bad pronunciation for work on imaging the electrons so uh, you know the atom right 
it's something called uh, uh, atom right uh, uh, yes so what do you call the at atomic time yeah so it is really tiny fraction of time and that is used to study what is actually going on inside the atoms including the electrons uh, one atomic second uh, is equal to the age of universe that is approximately 13 billion one second divided by 13 billion how much tiny fraction is that so it's possible now with the photon so they develop these photons uh, at extremely rapid pulse to image what is really going on inside the atom so that we can see image we can take image as well as we can see the spectroscopy that is more important no? spectroscopic study of the uh, the quantum states for instance of uh, the atom that is really fantastic technology this uh, uh, trio has developed now non-science related Nobel Prize piece goes to Nargis Mohammadi uh, she is a jailed Iranian journalist who stood for democratic principles you know and um, economics goes to Claudia Golden for uh, women's pay the salary structure of course there is a gender disparity in the salary so she did her um, seminal work on this topic very interesting isn't it and then finally uh, go uh, you know that the literature prize goes to John Fosse Fosse yeah John Fosse uh, from Norway the writer Norwegian writer whose major work include the boathouse published in 89 and melancholy part 1 and part 2 published in 95 and 96 honestly speaking I never even heard of this person so I would really like to have a look at uh, some of his work yeah and by the country right this this year's Nobel Prize how many countries have won it it's US when won seven Nobel Prizes this year Tunisia got two that is very surprising right such a small country like Tunisia getting two Nobel Prize Sweden won Russia won Norway won Iran won that's only Asian country getting the Nobel Prize Hungary got two yes Germany won France three and Austria won Congratulations to all the Nobel laureates. Third news is uh, one of the clickbait story popular everywhere, especially here in India about the sperm, human sperm defying the laws, the Newtonian laws of uh, motion. Uh, the third uh, uh, Newtonian law, that is every action will have equal and opposite reaction. So the, the human sperm do not follow it seems. So that is absolutely a wrong way of interpretation friends. They actually the story published in uh, New Scientist. So what is actually happening is about the Reynolds number. You might know about uh, Reynolds number in viscosity. So in very highly viscous media like in where the, you know, the, the sperm is swimming inside the uterus. Uh, to find uh, the ovum yeah, of course it is highly viscous so and the, uh, you know that the, the size of sperm is really minute so usual spinning will not work right you need a screwy movement that is the reason why it, it, the, the sperm has got this kind of a, a flagellum yeah the tail so uh, it, it, you know for example the whale swimming in the ocean right so when the, the whale stops swimming after taking that momentum the inertial force will let the whale swim further right so that in such cases the Newtonian third law is absolutely applicable but in this kind of situation like the sperm is moving in a super high viscous medium where Reynolds number is tiny tiny fraction uh, such things the inertial forces are really zero right here the, the prominent force is uh, viscosity so it's all about incorrect understanding of basic physics leading to the clickbait story it's, it's nonsense story friends don't fall into that the fourth one is about a very major study uh, it's it's by the science magazine 246 uh, scientists the ecologist analyze the same data set and everyone got different data you know the results of this exactly same ecological data set uh, you know were interpreted 246 different ways you see so see scientists like us have a tendency to read only the results and discussion section when we are reading the paper and then we conclude the study is about so and so what the main uh, results are right 
we don't really care about the raw data but what this study says is that raw data is extremely important more important than the results that they got because the result depends upon so many things so for instance what kind of statistical test you do and what is your confidence level that you do this uh, this test you know uh, all these things are really important for that right so that is the the question mark on the reproducibility so it is really important to look at the primary data uh, while interpreting the results friends that is really important next story is about chimpanzee uh, do have menopause very interesting till now we know only human beings having this menopause right and uh, yeah so you might know what, what is the reason why a human individuals live long after menopause right biologically speaking in as, as per the darwin's theory of evolution uh, you know the, the major objective of uh, a life of any uh, organism is to reproduce so post menopause when uh, the you know the women in any species sexually reproduced species are not uh, fertile what is the reason for living longer there is a very famous hypothesis called grandmother hypothesis because they can support their offspring and their grand you know granddaughters right for uh, for them to reach uh, reproductive maturity so it's pretty interesting that with in in the light of chimpanzees uh, menopause story revealed last month uh, grandmother's hypothesis gets uh, new limelight yes and the next is a personal good news that i got inducted into the governing committee of international science council remember last episode of the curiosity was shot in uh, penang uh, the georgetown of malaysia i went to malaysia for a meeting of international science council in kuala lumpur and outcome of that meeting is that i got selected into this uh, uh, governing committee so i'm really happy about it i'm looking forward to contributing more uh, for the uh, for spreading the word of science that mainly through this curious the science show that you are a subscriber to right so you can expect more such programs in the future so it is i'm um, really thrilled for contributing more to uh, the, the public good right science as a public good and uh, every single story of this uh, the curiosity do have the show notes please check out for the, the medium blog and in that show note usually every uh, uh, you know monthly curiosity show notes do present a cover image so this month's cover image is the annular solar eclipse uh, the image the time lapse fantastic image uh, shot by uh, sanil sansar one of my good friend he is a member of the young academy of india so do check out that cover image okay so a quick recap of the discoveries the main section of curiosity uh, potential rabies treatment by f11 antibody that's really interesting you know so uh, rabies as you know rabies is a prevalent infection in developing countries especially here in india rabies is really prevalent and when the virus gets into the central nervous system uh, you know it's impossible to cure the you know it is 100 percentage mortality so this new treatment by this f11 antibodies basically monoclonal antibody human uh, lisa virus antibody right monoclonal antibody is basically lab made antibody uh, lymphocyte uh, combined with the uh, myeloma cell to make it hybridoma cell to produce the uh, uh, a single uh, antibody which is actually only against one particular antigen in this case it's a only against the lisa virus right so fantastic you know when you inject this antibody into a, a person already having the you know a, a end stage rabies you can so save them i really hope this actually scale up but unfortunately because this one is not really rabies is not prevalent in uh, global north that is uh, uh, the developing uh, developed countries who is going to fund it so we really need a consortia of uh, uh, south, global south that is developing countries to fund such great initiative second story is about masking and covid 19 we have covered so many times in past so new stories from japan 2021 alone it saved 97 percentage of death so you know reduce the mortality by 97 percentage just by masking alone in japan very interesting news 
So, and a few stories on Alzheimer's disease. The third story is that for the first time, the researchers have found that Alzheimer's symptoms can be transferred to the healthy from Alzheimer's person to the healthy mouse just by fecal transplantation, that is by introducing the feces through the oral route. Of course, the study is in the mouse, obviously, because of the ethical reason. But yes, so that means that microbiome, the gut microbiome, the bacteria living in the gut is largely responsible for the Alzheimer's disease. So, to prevent Alzheimer's disease, good food is really important. That is the highlight of this study. It's very interesting. I'm looking forward to know more about this gut microbiome Alzheimer's disease connection. The fourth story is again on the Alzheimer's disease, but a fungal infection on the brain. A very common fungal infection of human being, Candida albicans, is now associated with uh, development of this myeloid beta myeloid proteins in the brain that that is uh, uh, linked with the Alzheimer's disease. That is that's really alarming story, you know. So of course, this uh, Candida albicans is really common. Uh, uh, you know human pathogen it is already linked with so many it's not just the skin right infection candid B is against the candid candid albicans the skin topical ointment right uh, candid albicans infection is already linked with uh, uh, even tooth cavities friends and even the small small uh, blood clots that leads to the the plaques in coronary artery and of course ultimately leading to atherosclerosis and uh, heart failure and you know the the myocardial infarction that is a heart uh, you know heart attack isn't it and also about eating disorder especially if you have this infection in your gut you tend to eat more and more sugar and uh, you know the, bypassing this uh, brain mechanism that you are hungry right the hunger you're always you're perpetually hungry you are eating a lot more sugar and now the alzheimer's that is now that you know the, the avoiding the candida albicans infection friends is uh, highlighted in this study by all means just try to avoid this infection and uh, the next story is that millions of Americans might be having a cognitive decline and they don't even know it. You know, the Annan's disease is a very famous in uh, a psychology. That means the blind people, so many blind people are unaware that they are really blind unless a person tells them that, oh, your eyesight is declining. They, they don't even know that, you know. So that this study highlights the importance of annual health checkup, especially with the cognitive capabilities check up you know uh, especially for the older adults if you are uh, post 60 uh, even post 40 uh, years old go for annual check up where a uh, uh, competent uh, you know physician analyzes various health parameters of you we have covered this topic often in uh, uh, the curiosity about the dementia and alzheimer's disease so this dementia actually is a silent cause of traffic accidents too Right? So, undetecting the cases of dementia is le it's lethal. It's not just your life, but also it affects somebody else's life too. Because if you ride rashly, unknowingly yourself, right, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're putting others' life into danger. And uh, another ADHD, uh, you know, this uh, uh, Alzheimer's uh, story is that ADHD uh, is linked, it's li associated with the Alzheimer's disease. That's very interesting. ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity, uh, you know, uh, disease or syndrome uh, where you're, uh, you know, you lack the concentration, you cannot concentrate on one thing, uh, you're always hyperactive, you know, and yeah, so that is ADHD. Uh, it's also pretty close to autism, and I'm looking forward to see is there any connection with autism and Alzheimer's disease? Probably yes. I have no idea about it. But with ADHD associated with the Alzheimer's disease, uh, yeah, so next usual target is the, uh, the autism. So in case, un unfortunately, you have been diagnosed with ADHD, time to check up for Alzheimer's, you know, so the biomarkers of Alzheimer's. And the next story is that uh, so, uh, a few stories on parenting. Young children who are close to their parents later in their life, develop having lots of pro-social qualities for instance they become more empathetic conscientious you know helpful uh, to others kind to others so it's very important that parental support to the uh, development of the young children's life that is what is highlighted in this story 
Next story is that the new story, uh, new st uh, study shows that the babies learn to imitate. We all know that babies are imitating others. How do they learn it? Because their mothers are uh, imitating them. They are being imitated by their mothers. That is really interesting, right? So mothers, if you are a mother watching this curiosity, try to imitate the small baby often so that the baby picks up this tendency to imitate you. Baby feels really good that somebody is actually listening to them. That's really important. Even even in the adults, isn't it? Being kind. If you are a supervisor in your uh, workplace, just listen to the uh, workers. That in itself will elicitate psychological safety into them. You know, the workplace psychological safety is the trending topic these days, covered in the Curiosity many times in past. So yes, yeah, so being imitated that is really interesting. Yeah, and uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Im uh, imitation is really important for the process of becoming an adult human. Yeah, and ninth story is that the experts have warned that fat talk by mothers to their daughters have negative repercussions later in their life. Fat talk is kind of fat shaming, yeah? sublimely telling their kids are uh, you know fat. They're putting on the weight. So unfortunately that leads to psychological problems, say even eating disorders and body satisfaction issues, you know, uh, you're so beware of this kind of fat talk. Though the study is about mothers to their uh, daughter, I would say it is both parents, you know, so the, the father is also important, father to the, the son, why not? So just be uh, aware of this new, the, the new study published in this about the fat talk. Next story is the a little bit on the politics, American politics here, the conservatives are less likely to purchase imperfect fruits and vegetables, very interesting, you know, they are more perfectionist, they're looking for perfect things in life. Having lived in Japan, one aspect of Japanese lifestyle which I really hate is this uh, inordinate tendency to buy uh, really perfect fruits and vegetables so that if you're in in the you know in in the trash areas of farmland you can see lots of uh, uh, imperfect fruits and vegetables trashed in it unfortunate scene you know there are no buyers for it like for example the cucumber instead of a, a straight cucumber if it's a little bit you know slanted no takers so here now this new study is about the political preference to it conservatives are more prone for this kind of judge mentality that is really bad another story about the same american politicians is the cryptocurrency the trend of popularity of cryptocurrency is tied with conservative moral principles so conservatives are more prone for buying and uh, trading on the cryptocurrencies that's very interesting next story is that the scientists have found microplastics deep inside a lake which are untouched you know by human being for the last many decades so it's completely close to the the, the public in Missouri it's a cave you know microplastics the, the the topic comes very often in the curiosity last episode we featured that the microplastics are found even in the clouds you know a Japanese study right so this one coming from Missouri is that it's found in the uh, close to the public cave so that highlights that how pervasive this issue has become you know it's like a forever chemical yeah so it is cosmopolitan friends microplastics are contaminating every single habitat of the world and even beyond right even in the clouds and even in antarctic pristine uh, ice it has been detected the microplastics so we really need to uh, you know we really need to uh, find a global solution to this great problem. Next story is that the world may have closed a tipping point that will uh, inevitably make the solar uh, power generation the main source of uh, the energy. That's very interesting. I never thought, I never expected the day would come that soon. Now the total solar energy production in all forms, you know, uh, domestic and industrial and including the you know the, the automobile whatever the the solar production now has exceeded 50 percentage threshold compared with the the fossil fuel you know that is very exciting news i'm really happy to read this paper 
13th story is that the scientist proposed sweeping new law of the nature. Well, I put a little bit of a pinch of salt in it, you know, so it is not like a theory of everything as the authors claim and especially the authors didn't claim, but the interpreters, that is the, the journalists, the science journalists have claimed it. The paper is mostly a philosophical paper, not a scientific paper and the paper merely extended the Darwin's theory of evolution to bigger and smaller thing, right from the quantum to the universe, about the order. You know, so the, the, the law is known as law of increasing fundamental information, which is just an extension of the natural selection of the Darwin. So natural selection uh, of the Darwin is uh, for the uninformed. It's that population have lot of variants. That is like, look at the human population, right? Each individual is different. We have different uh, skills. Some variants are more fit because they are adaptive variants, they have adaptive qualities. And those fit variants survive to the reproductive age and they pass on their genes to the next generation compared with non-fit variants. And therefore, those variants which are adaptive thrive in population, that is the natural selection in a nutshell. So the same thing is happening at all levels, even at the universe level, even at the computer virus level. So a kind of this story has already been, uh, you know, popular in many years back. I even teach this in, in my evolutionary biology class. You can see that in, even in five or so six years old YouTube videos on evolutionary biology, the computer virus comes in, you know. So it's nothing new here and I'm a bit skeptical about uh, uh, extrapolation of this story into the uh, theory of everything is nothing like that. But yeah, it's, it's a philosophical paper published in PNAS, Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, US. Next story is a, a, a radio burst traveled 8 billion years. So it is coming from 8 billion light years, the unit of distance, isn't it? Uh, almost at the edge of the universe, the other side of the universe, the other, exactly the other side of the universe is approximately 13 billion, isn't it? So 8 billion years this burst has traveled and uh, a, a radio telescope in uh, so, uh, in Australia, right, in South Southern Hemisphere, right, has detected it. That is very interesting news from the last month. And next story is that in classroom, uh, you know, the teacher's authority is no longer accepted by the student. So, authority or, and, uh, you know, the distrust of authority is now global trend. Distrust in science, for instance. Distrust in any form of wisdom, right? Uh, uh, for instance, uh, during COVID-19, we have seen that, right? Even the public health related, uh, you know, information people are uh, skeptical about it. Yeah, so distrust is now everywhere. Adults are being, uh, uh, you know, questioning the authority and they are imparting this trend into their pupil. Their kids are also end up distrusting their teachers. So how can you actually change your teaching skill in this changing environment? So one of the solution, this paper, very interesting paper, is something called double addressing. So instead of saying in the class, if you're a teacher, if you're saying something in the class as a universal truth, just pick one student and tell him or her, you know, this is the concept and ask or request the person to share the rest of the class, this concept, although you're addressing in the class, you know, so this is one way of addressing. And the another way is just the opposite of it. Tell to the class a universal uh, truth or a concept and ask or request the class to explain her or him. Pick one student and explain her. This is the concept, please tell or teach them. You know? This is called double addressing. This is a very interesting way to bypass, to deal with, you know, this uh, problem of uh, uh, this one, uh, the distrust in the class, okay? Next story is uh, AI translation. So, of course, AI is changing every every field that you can think of. This is 5,000 years old cuneiform tablets, friends. You know, so to the English. So, it is decrypting this uh, cuneiform script. You know, so uh, last month with my mother, we went to Kolkata and a, a, a spot we went to see the sunset is uh, called Princep Khat. 
overlooking Vidyasagar Setu, the bridge, you know. And Prinsap Ghat is named after James Prinsap, the English uh, archaeologist. And he is credited of decrypting or decoding Pali, the ancient Buddhist, Indo-Buddhist script, Pali script. So it's very interesting, right? So now nowadays this task is now taken over by AI. That is very, very interesting. Yeah. Next story is that I would rather not know is a very important uh, cognitive bias. You know, people, even if you put them some new information, they will not learn. They don't want, there's, they have something called confirmation bias, you know, and cognitive dissonance. If you give them some uh, alternate world view, world view, they protest violently. And what is the reason for it? So this study uh, shown so many people, they, they have given them how their actions will affect someone else's uh, life. So if you, uh, would you like to learn that? So I'm asking you, the learner, how your action is going to impact someone else's life or someone else's in general, right? Whatever be the action is, would you like to learn that? So you might say yes or no, uh, but this survey did this uh, question and 40 percentage of the people choose ignorance. They don't want to learn because they want to li live in this uh, deceptive world uh, of uh, a good self image. They're mostly narcissist, you know, they don't want to challenge their worldview or their self image. That is alarming. So that is what this research suggests. Do subscribe to our curiosity and also check out our, uh, you know, this uh, uh, show notes for the links to all these uh, exciting articles. And also check out our Facebook group for many more exciting curiosity driven stories. Uh, we have a group of volunteers, the moderators, they do approve most of the curiosity related uh, research papers and research findings, be it in sciences or humanities or political science or economics. We do a, a put up in, okay. Next section of the curiosity is about observances. Third is uh, the best day to spot Jupiter. It's called Jupiter in opposition. Fourth is Saturn torrid meteor shower. So many meteor shower is expected in this month of uh, November. Fifth is the World Tsunami Awareness Day. Ninth is the International Week of Science for Peace. Yeah, and also Berlin Science Week is excited. Uh, it is the biggest science festival, friends, in the world, you know. And uh, yes, yeah, so it is expected uh, in, uh, you know, it, uh, it will start in um, uh, this early on uh, uh, this uh, month, November. And this is the world's largest science festival, Berlin Science Week, okay. And also on the 9th, you can expect a Moon-Venus conjunction. Same frame, Moon and Venus together. 10th is the Science Day, World Science Day for Peace and Development. The UN is highlighting science. Please use science for peace and world development, not for the home. You know, very nice uh, ethics behind it. 12th is Northern Torrid Meteor Shower. 13th is Antibiotic Awareness Day, especially on the misuse of antibiotic leading to antibiotic resistance. Uranus at opposition, the blue planet is at the opposition on 13th. 14th is World Diabetes Day. 17th is World Philosophy Day. 18th is Leonid Meteor Shower. 19th is Toilet Day. To emphasize that, uh, you know, that we really need to stop open defecation that is in so many of the developing countries in the world have insufficient number of toilets and uh, open defecation is everywhere. The world in unison should address this issue. That is uh, this day is all for. 20th is the Children's Day. And here in this 14th is the, the you know, the, the National Children's Day, isn't it? So uh, the UN uh, the Children's Day is on 20th of uh, November. And Moon-Saturn conjunction is also on the same day. 22nd is another meteor shower called Alpha Monocerotid. 25th is elimination of violence against women and also moon Jupiter conjunction. 27th of November is a full moon. November full moon, something called beaver moon as per the uh, red Indian almanac. Yeah. 
and also yeah so 27th is a november full moon though it is not a super moon right 28th is a november orionid meteor shower so many meteor shower and unfortunately where i live we cannot see this meteor shower because of the air pollution skies are no longer uh, blue right and uh, if you are somewhere in blue skies region you know less affected by the the air pollution or in high altitude you can see these uh, meteor showers yeah 28th is november orionic meteor shower and 30th is a remembrance of all victims of chemical warfare so that's it for the uh, observances and now final part of curiosity is about opportunities for uh, young uh, researchers you know and also for the students right indo german call of the dst and dad fellowship the german uh, research wing right exchange fellowship is open now for personal exchange they support uh, the mobility grant so basically they support your uh, visa fee and airfare 20th november is a deadline students can apply and also the young researchers can also apply for it branco wise fellowship society in science call for postdoc very prestigious postdoc in the switzerland is open now 15th january is the deadline uh, january 2024 the next year no swiss government phd and postdoc scholarship is open now 10th november is a deadline for doing phd and postdoc in switzerland american association for the university women uh, fellowships uh, is called scholarships are open 15th november closing soon if you are a woman everywhere in the world can apply for this scholarship for uh, phd and postdoc positions okay lundbeck uh, foundation's postdoc call is also open now now uh, 1st to 10th november is a berlin science week uh, if you are somewhere in the european union you can apply you can go easily you know it won't cost you much or anywhere if you go traveling to the uh, europe you can uh, consider attending this berlin science week and of course, there are several JRF and postdocs, uh, you know, and also fellowship calls are open. You can please check out our, uh, you know, the Curiosity Facebook group uh, for all these uh, links. And also the show notes to, that takes you to my blog for all the, the links of this uh, episode, right? You can, you can check it out. And uh, yeah, so one of the participants asked me, what book am I reading in my Kindle? These days I'm all in the Kindle. I don't read, I don't even touch the physical book any, any longer, no longer. This is really ultra lightweight and it's so much easier for me to, to read while traveling and so many good things, you know. The book which I'm reading right now is uh, called Outlaw. Uh, you know the science and art of longevity by peter atia he's uh, uh, you know he's a he, he's a surgeon uh, you know and now he's into the longevity research so it's, it's a fantastic book i'm midway through and i of course i will share the uh, my own review and a summary of this book once i complete this book okay in my in my channel and as usual my latest book uh, you know the life skill is available at a reduced price if you order through the link uh, uh, given below and uh, do check it out right and uh, yeah so that's it i hope uh, this you find this show useful in case you find it useful do share uh, with uh, whoever is enthusiast with the uh, curiosity driven basic facts also do check out the young academy of india you can uh, uh, be a member of our young academy no cost involved it's completely free just few clicks away and uh, do uh, become a member of our academy yes and that's it i will see you soon with uh, uh, yet another episode of uh, exciting curiously driven news in the month of december until then goodbye